everyone. Um, Isaac, should I start or? joining us today we're going to have an introduction about web accessibility and uh, please let me know if you have any questions anytime and okay let me share my presentation and uh, well first thank you to the IO foundation for the opportunity let me um, okay, I work in Accessibility Lab and we seek uh, the inclusion of people with disabilities through accessibility in the digital world. Uh, hold on. I also have a, a certification by the International Association of Accessibility Professionals. And also, it's important that you, for you to know that in the world, one in seven people has a disability. Of course, since uh, we can all agree that the internet and mobile devices are essential in our daily lives, so it's really important uh, that anyone has the ability to have access. This is vital. Uh, but what is web accessibility? Well, web accessibility is uh, when the content of an app or a website is perceivable to everyone and is when the content of a web page is available to everyone and the functionality can be operated by anyone. Eliminate obstacles when interacting, transmitting, receiving, or understanding information. And what we want is a world that includes everyone and a lot of organizations seek to offer their users and customers a good user experience but many fail to consider people with disabilities accessibility has a lot of benefits uh, we have benefits for the users and benefits for the organizations. Uh, in the case of the users, the main benefits is autonomy because digital accessibility will provide efficient and safe options for education, employment, and everyday tasks. I mean, uh, and accessibility is a win-win uh, for everyone. Also for organizations or companies or, or government institutions, uh, we will have um, an inclusion of culture, a culture of inclusion. You will increase your brand value. You will show to the customers or your users social responsibility. You will have a competitive advantage because you uh, will offer products and services accessible and also will improve your CEO positioning because um, Google or other uh, browsers are like a blind user. They will look for tags, they will look for structure, so this will, will benefit you, your positioning. Also, you will avoid legal risk, especially in countries like uh, US, Canada, or the European Union. And also you will capture a huge and commonly overlooked market. Does anyone have any questions so far? You can comment on the chat, but I think not so far. Okay. Um, okay, well, let's continue. Um, 
So who um, who we can um, involve in, in to engage in web accessibility and inclusion? Well, first, uh, directors and executives, also product owners and product project managers, uh, user interface and user experience designers, also marketing and content teams. Uh, because, of course, they will need to provide accessible content for the site or social media or emails. Of course, developers, because they will always uh, must code uh, to WCAG standards. We will see what we mean by that. Uh, also, QA, uh, because they must test using assistive technology, like screen readers, for example and also customer service teams because they need to know how assist users or customers uh, from the disability community in case they have issues with the website or any other question. So how to start and what to do? Well, first we recommend uh, awareness and training courses uh, of uh, to increase awareness, of course, about the uh, people with disabilities community and also to know the uh, the web content accessibility guidelines. Also to request for an accessibility assessment so you can know uh, what problems your website have and how to improve them. Um, also, of course, to have accessible web design and development. And to maintain this accessibility, you will need to have uh, to make testing and monitoring. And we recommend monitoring uh, with people with disabilities because of course, they are the final users that will benefit directly, but also all users will benefit. Elderly people, uh, people with low connections to the internet, uh, people who are not really familiarized with the internet and all that. And well, uh, we recommend you three steps to follow uh, uh, that we can call your accessibility roadmap. Uh, first, you need to ask yourself, where are you? Uh, if you have no idea, uh, no idea how accessible is your website or app, um, uh, well, you need to um, run tests and request an assessment, um, and then uh, come or go to the right place. Improve your accessibility and start with awareness and trainings in your team. Why it's important that your team know how to do this? Because they are always maintaining the site and they will do that uh, in the future considering accessibility. And then stay in the right place. Um, make accessibility part of your day to day. Uh, include people with disabilities and consider evaluations and monitoring capacities. And uh, this uh, monitoring uh, can be each week, each month, depend on how how many updates your website have. So, um, how how do we know if the website is accessible or not? Uh, we go uh, and study the web content accessibility guidelines. This guideline was created for the World Wide Web Consortium or W3C. And they have a group of work that is called Web Accessibility Initiative. And they created this standard, which is recognized in almost every country in the world. And a lot of legislation are uh, referring to this international standard. The most updated version of the standard is the version 2.1. So you can uh, Google it, uh, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines 2.1, and you will have all the information that you need because it's open source. Anyone can consult it and share it. Any questions so far? Let me go to the air meet uh, chat because I cannot see. 
Uh, message people. Okay, no, no comments. No. Okay, well, let me continue. So, which disabilities affect the the web? Uh, well, we're talking about uh, visual disability, hearing, motor, and cognitive disabilities. Um, cognitive disabilities are the ones that affect the brain. So we are talking about a lot of possibilities there. And the things that uh, people with disabilities use to um, overcome this disability or try to navigate in the web, they use assistive technologies. And here we have uh, some examples uh, because uh, sometimes they will need these technologies to help to compensate for their lack or the ability or, center or in certain areas. Um, and these technologies will, uh, well, are designed specifically for people that um, need, for example, if you are blind, you will need a screen reader. Or if you have motor disability and you cannot control your hands, you can use a big keyboard or a big mouse or uh, switches uh, that you can set up um, to simulate the um, functionality on some key, key, um, key keys on, on your keyboard. Here we have uh, an example of high contrast keyboard. And on the other picture, we have uh, Braille displays. Uh, for example, if you are deaf blind, uh, you can use this Braille display, which will convert the text in Braille format. So with your hands, you can uh, read each line of text that the website has. Uh, also, we have other examples of switches. For example, here the red one uh, switch is the tab button and the tab key, and the green uh, switch is the enter key. We also have the TOBI tracking um, that uh, can uh, simulate the use of a mouse in case you, you cannot move your your whole body, you can just move your eyes and select any content on the web page that you need. And we also have software uh, like uh, screen readers. Uh, if you have a Windows computer, you can use JAWS or NVDA. Or if you have a Mac, you can use VoiceOver that it's already installed in your computer or in your iPhone. Uh, you just go to accessibility, uh, set settings, accessibility, visual uh, disability, and you will find VoiceOver. You can activate it and deactivate it anytime you want. And in the case of Android, you can have Google Talkback or Voice Assistant in the newer new newer versions. Uh, so let's talk about a little uh, general information about the legislation of web accessibility. Um, internationally, we are uh, we know the Convention of the Rights of Persons with Disabilities that in the Article Nine. They uh, reaffirms that all persons with all types of disabilities must enjoy all human rights and fundamental freedoms, and it gives the same information, the same importance to physical accessibility and digital accessibility. Um, it was adopted in two thousand and six at the United Nations in New York, so it's really really old. Well, not at all. And there are another um, local legislation. Uh, for example, in US, you ha we have uh, um, the uh, Section 508 uh, legislation that uh, talks about uh, web accessibility. Um, and 
Uh, in the case that you are not complying with this accessibility, you are risking a legal uh, lawsuit. Uh, right now, we, we have uh, hundreds of lawsuits, uh, thousands of demand letters from users asking companies to become more accessible. Uh, I think the most famous case is uh, Target, which was um, uh, sued for uh, $6 million and uh, well, it cost them $6 million um, plus uh, over $3 million of other plaintiff legal fees. Uh, so we're talking about $9 million for not being accessible. And at the end, they need to become accessible and right now target it's a really good example of accessibility you can buy online with a screen reader or any other assistive technology that you want all products have descriptions uh, and you can finish uh, the shop to shopping and the in in an independent way if you are a people with a person with disabilities and we have other suits of really famous companies like Bed, Bed Bath & Beyond, The Home Depot, and Domino's Pizza, which is really recent and because a user, a blind user wasn't able to uh, buy pizza uh, through the app. So he decided to sue Domino's Pizza. And in the case of uh, Netflix, MIT, and Harvard University, uh, we have also suits, but only uh, because they didn't have closed caption in the videos, in the multimedia content. And like that, we have like a hundred other hundred uh, examples. And in the case of Europe, um, they have these uh, accessibility requirements suitable for public procurement of ICT products and services. And it says that uh, uh, in by 2020, all websites must be accessible, and by two by this year, all apps must be accessible. And uh, after this legislation, each country has his own um, fees or his own um, you know ways to to supervise the implementation of this accessibility fines and everything. So, what is uh, how how is the structure of this international standard? Well, uh, the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines has uh, four principles, thirteen guidelines, and three level levels of accessibility. The levels are A, double A, and triple A. Triple A is like the most complete and most advanced, is the maximum level of conformance. And A is like the minimum level of conformance. Almost in all countries, uh, the requirement for governments and, you know, all public uh, institutions are uh, double A uh, compliance. Does anyone have a question? Let me go. Mm, no? Okay. Well, um, the four um, principles are perceivable, oper operable, understandable, and robust. And we will see a few examples of this standard. The most common and simple example is alternative text. So if you are blind or you have a visual disability and you are not able to see the image, uh, developers must offer um, an alternative text to describe the content of this image. For example, we we have here uh, a picture of a panda eating bamboo and this alt must be in the code so it will not affect the design or anything in your website you, you will just uh, have this option 
And in the case that we are uh, talking about multimedia content, uh, well, in, if you have audio only, um, that it's a pre-recorder like podcast or something like that, you must offer a textual description, for example, a transcript of all the information that it's uh, in, in that podcast. And in the case that you have a uh, video only pre-recorded, um, I mean, no audio, only video, you have two options in the level A. You can choose offer a textual description of the video or you can uh, choose to offer an audio track to describe the content of the video. And uh, another example of level A uh, conformance is uh, for videos, like uh, almost all videos that we are used to see with video and audio synchronized, uh, you, must offer uh, you must offer captions. It can be closed caption or open captions. It's like um, you can decide how to offer it, but uh, you will need this for people with hearing disability. A lot of people of the community of hearing disability, they don't know how to read. They just, especially in countries like, for example, Mexico or, or uh, other um, developing countries, their only language is sign, sign language. So it's really important. Uh, well, in the case uh, you you decided to be a level three, you can offer sign language. In in the case that you decided just comply with level A, you you can offer captions. And uh, the other requirement is uh, that you offer for videos an audio description, which uh, can be. Um, so you need to make sure that the, the audio describes all the content of the um, video. In case you are not complying, you need to record a second audio uh, that will describe all visual information, for example, in a movie. Or you can choose to offer just a textual description. And... Oh, okay, sorry, I was. Okay, here is an example of closed caption and transcript. It's really simple. You can activate or deactivate it in the captions. And on the right, you will see uh, the transcript. This is actually dynamic. So you can see in yellow uh, the text that it's speaking by this woman. And in the case of live content, if you are uh, transmitting, for example, a radio, a live radio uh, program, uh, you will you need to offer uh, captions, uh, live live captions. Uh, this is level double A. And as I was saying, if you want to comply with level triple A you can offer sign language interpretation for all your videos. And even if it is triple A, sorry, triple A, uh, you can, um, well, uh, you will make really happy a lot of uh, people with hearing disability. So what about other type of examples? Uh, for example, from to apps, um, it's the orientation. The content of your app should not restrict its view and operation to a single display orientation. So you must offer both uh, portrait and landscape. This is because uh, a lot of people with motor disability, uh, for example, they use their app in their wheelchair that it's already uh, installed and in a fixed uh, position. So if you limit the view, they will not be able to use it correctly. And also we have here an example of color. 
that says that color is not used as the only visual means of conveying information, indicating an action, prompting a response, or distinguish a visual element. Um, for example, in this in this button, and that it means start in Spanish, um, it is green, so we are using color, but we are not depending on color because we are also using text and shape. So this is really accessible. But if we just indicate the status by color, we will depend, like in this example, we are uh, offering the information of the status with only yellow color. And if I am color blindness and I'm not able to see color, this will not be accessible for me. Uh, how can we fix that? Well, we can just add text um, to, to the color. Oh, sorry, I'm not showing the example. Okay, here is the example uh, of the status uh, indicated with just color. And in this other example, uh, we're trying to send the uh, form with without filling any information. So all requirements, all um, inputs that are required, um, well, they are showing in red color. But if I cannot see red color, I don't know what is the problem with the form. And we here have an example also um, about two um, graphs. Um, both are using the same types of color, but one is not accessible. The right one is not accessible because it's depending only on color to indicate which which is which which is what and. And the, and the first one that is accessible, we are using these small arrows or windows to indicate the percentage and the uh, type of um, content that it's in that graph. So this is uh, accessible. Um, also, there are uh, color contrast requirements uh, for all the content that we publish on in our website. And in, in case you are not uh, familiar with the, requirement, the requirements of color contrast, you can use um, a color contrast checker. There are a lot of color contrast checkers online. They are free. You can also download uh, one of the Pasielo group um, which is also free and it's a program that you install in your computer and you just use it to compare the colors of your content. But in this case, you can, uh, in this uh, color uh, contrast checker analyzer, you can just, uh, you know, write the code of the color or play with this bar and you will have the results in here if you are passing or if you are failing. Um, of course, if you don't have enough color contrast, you will fail the requirement and you will have this indication of failing. Another simple requirement of um, accessibility is uh, the reflow, uh, which is, uh, in other words, a uh, responsive web design. Uh, so, of course, your, your app or website must be must be okay in these formats. Um, okay, and for the non-text contrast, we have the same requirements from text and background for contrast, and here we have uh, the same icon and button but with low contrast and high contrast. As you can see, this is not accessible and this is more accessible. I mean, we are not against color. We love color, 
but we are just asking for you to use a good color contrast between background and text or lines or any content that um, indicates some information. And also, um, well, there is a really basic requirement the, about keyboard accessibility. And it says that all functionality of the content must be operable through a keyboard interface. A lot of people cannot use a mouse, especially if you're using a, an assistive technology. So you must make sure that your website works with just the keyboard. Try to navigate with, key, with tab key and enter to activate some link and you will um, notice if you can see the focus, if you cannot see the focus, if you can enter to the menu and submenu, or if you cannot. Um, so you do not need to be an expert on web accessibility uh, to test this. And it will give you a really good idea about how good or how bad is the accessibility of the website. And also, for example, in the case of uh, links, um, the purpose of each link can be determined from the link uh, text alone or from the link text together with its link context. Avoid using um, general uh, descriptive text, for example, click here or more information or read more because people with assistive technology, um, for example, if I am blind and I'm using a screen reader, I can select a shortcut in my in my keyboard and I will get a list of all the links. So if the text of the links are the same, I will not know where to go. So each link and text must be uh, descriptive, um, descriptive about the destination of the link. Or as we can see in here, uh, group the icon with the text. Um, do you have any questions? Let me see again the chat. Nope. Okay. Please, um, I mean, let me know if you have any comment or question or anything. It will be more interesting. Okay. Well, another important requirement is uh, the visibility of the focus when I'm uh, navigating with a keyboard. Um, for example, here we are indicated with uh, underline and this point line. Um, where I where am I? And in case I want to go, I just click enter. But if I if I can navigate with the keyboard, but I'm not showing where the focus is, I'm failing this requirement. Another, um, another example is the section headings uh, that must be used to organize the content of the website. Uh, here, we just use the HTML uh, heading structure which is really basic. We have H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Uh, so we must use H1 for the title that is the most important, and then, um, you know, use the other headings according to uh, the structure of the content. Also, with a, a shortcut in my screen reader, I can get a list of headings so I can understand the structure of the web page because it's not that I can see all like a lot of people do that we just scroll down and see all the content of a website that decide where to go. If I'm blind, this heading structure will help me to know uh, 
which is which is the most important of the, of the on the website and which is less important and what is about that content another requirement is um, the target size if i'm if i have my app or responsive design um, I need to make sure that uh, the size of the target for pointer inputs is at least 44 by 4, 44 for CSS pixels, or just use common sense to make your buttons or and links be big enough and not too close to each other because a lot of people can make mistakes uh, clicking or selecting. And um, I recommend you that you always uh, test the website. Uh, maybe you are not a developer, maybe you are not a designer, maybe you are a director or a marketing uh, or community manager, or and you want to know how accessible is the website, just use a screen reader, forget about your mouse, and use the keyboard. If you can, if you have Windows, you can download NVDA and Just, but NVDA is free, so I really recommend it. I mean, you can donate. I also recommend that. And if you have Mac, just activate your voiceover and try to close your eyes, try to cover your screen and start to navigate the website. And if it makes sense to you, well, it can be accessible. If it doesn't make sense, if you cannot answer a form, if you cannot uh, finish a shop uh, a buy, if you can, I mean, if you cannot use the website as any other user uh, in an equivalent way, it will not be accessible. Um, so where to go? Uh, well, I recommend to visit the a links of uh, the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, which are the official ones, uh, the link of the Web Accessibility Initiative, uh, there is a link of WCAP tree introduction, and also you can always ask a consultant to help you. Uh, also here are my information, and please let me know if we, we still have uh, time so let me know if you have questions comments maybe you um, can share me a link of your website and I can share it on the screen and offer you a feedback No, any comment? Maybe I can share. I can select a web a web page, um, any web page that I that I can guess. But it would be nice if I can offer feedback for uh, someone that is in here. I mean, to be more to have more benefits. <laughs> No. Okay, I will select a website. Um, I don't know, cover uh, the White House. Okay, um, well, let's um, try to navigate with just my keyboard. 
I will uh, select tab key. Um, we have a skip content link. Uh, I, I don't know if you can see. My first tab, it gets to a skip content link. Uh, this is for the beneficial of people with visual disabilities, so they cannot uh, they are not repeating uh, all the information on the heading and go directly to the main content. In this case, we're not going to use it. And next tab is in high contrast, a large font size, which is really accessible. And the logo of the White House. And as I'm tabbing, I can see where am I. Uh, I can see focus. And I believe also that it has a really good contrast. Let me show you. This is the program that I was telling you about that it's from the Paciello group. Uh, it's color contrast analyzer. So the only thing that I do is select the uh, foreground color, which is in this case. Oh, sorry. In this case, is uh, background color is white. I was already there. And I select the color of the letter. And I can see that I am passing double A and triple A requirements of color contrast. Uh, but for example, that blue with this background, it's also passing. Of course, the White House is really accessible. Mm, but Imagine that we have a background, a blue background, really similar uh, to the text or black. Of course, this is not good enough contrast and the results will be fail, 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 fail. Okay, so we have focus indicator. We have uh, descriptive links. We can also see. I will... Um, Put my screen reader. Let me know if you can hear it, please, because I haven't tested that with Hermit. Record uh, Sarah. Action Hermit desktop content shared Google Chrome. Can Documento you hear? Procedendo and Blanco. Can Air you meet. hear my screen Clickable reader? Graphico to get missing image fold folder view. Messages. What would you like to share? At the message con air meet mm. post. What would you like to share? Well, I don't know. Edition air meet document. Can anyone Peace share a message? Initiative. But well, I will navigate with tab key and the White House Google Chrome. I hope you can the hear message over there. The White House document high contrast and fonts toggle large font size book titulo region the White House visitado and the White House to get missing image descriptions. Open the context menu. Listed elementos di folder re li list. So here are the links of uh, um, of the white. House here are the links of all the, the websites position. with my screen reader. Statements and releases. Twitter opens in a position indicate statement. So statements. in this case, statements and releases. This is not really nice because I have uh, statements and releases the same text for different links. I don't know if they go to the same place or statement maybe they President go to Joseph the, R. Biden, the junior on the one year anniversary of the, of the passing the of article. Congressman John in Tipo Agrapacion in Cabezados Boton de Opsi and Pulsa de Sinmark Tip the build. Here are the headings of the website. The build statement by president joe biden on daca and which Pulse they Jeff. are really long but um maybe they are descriptive about the content campos de formula rio campos de formula rio boton de we can, we can also Mark see from uh, inputs buttons botons botop top and regions regions, regions of the, boton in the code and, and, la and laces boat admit our ball. So, for the example, if I select priorities, priorities to 59 nibble zero, the White House Google Chrome, the White it House will document take me to there. So, present type here to end, 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 no, no, over, end, let end, me turn end, off. End, a scepter. Okay. So, 
I actually never knew if you hear my screen reader, but I, I think that you saw the list of uh, links and headings as an example. Um, any other web page that you want to, uh, maybe one that is not as accessible as the White House. So I can see on the list of people um, and okay, there is a Colmel Colmilla Solutions in Philippines. Let me see if I can find something, some website there. Mm. Solutions. Okay, let's try this website. Um, try to navigate with keyboard. We can see focus. Let's try to enter to the submenu. I click enter. And nothing happened. I click enter again and nothing happened. So this is an example uh, when the submenu is not accessible with keyboard. Um, I need to use the mouse to go to these options. If I try to just go to with keyboard and click enter, I'm not able to. I will also test this color contrast. Mm with this green and this yellow and it's failing uh, so maybe you can look for a better color to um, you know change the yellow color and uh, okay let's continue to navigate with keyboard Request a demo. Let's think that we click enter and request a demo. So um, I'm waiting. Okay, now I'm on the form. So um, let's see. Well, I'm pretty sure uh, the, the screen reader will uh, inform the placeholder here, but I'm not sure it is a correct way to uh, put the label uh, because the problem with placeholder is for some people who is familiar is with uh, the code of uh, the input. Here is the placeholder. But the problem with placeholder is that they do not have enough color contrast and also they disappear when I write. So if I write um, everything and then uh, I think that I made a mistake or I'm not sure if I, co I answered correctly and I want to come back, I don't know which thing is which. So it can be really confusing. Uh, maybe for cognitive disabilities, um, because for me, maybe it's obvious, but not for everyone. So we will recommend to show a label outside the input. And also increase color contrast. Um, let's try to select and the checkbox with just the keyword. So if I click enter on global job mapping, it's not activating. So these uh, options are not accessible with keyboard, only with mouse, which is another fail of accessibility. And so let's try to send 
with all my mistakes. So I click enter and I have just a um, validation message about one or more fields have an error. But if I am blind, I don't know which, which input has an error. So my recommendation will be to offer a validation message specifically for each error. For example, here I will write, your email is required. Not only the field is required, but because maybe a lot of fields are required and I don't want to hear the same message over and over. I, for example, here, you, maybe the screen reader will say the field is required, the field is required, the field is required, and but if I am blind, I don't know. So it should say the the email is required, the name is required, the company is required. Um, okay, here is a good color contrast with blue. I'm not sure about the yellow or red color with white. I don't think so. Um, but um, let's see if we have an image at home. Well, we have an image in this logo, I think. Um, for example, here. Let's see if this logo has an alternative text. So we just go to inspect and select the image. And we see on the code that there is an alt, but it's empty. So if this image is only decorative, I don't need an alt description. But I think it's not only decorative. I mean, I could write an alt that says, um, call me a cloud service logo. And that will be a good description. Mm. Uh, also, let's check the headings just before we end this session. Uh, to check the headings, I use this the web developer tool. I go to information and view document outline and see the heading structure. Uh, as you can see here, we don't have an H1, H2 or HT h3 so we're jumping to h4 which doesn't make any sense because we should have an h1 to describe the main content of the website and then we jump to h2 h2 well maybe that is not bad uh, for example uh, maybe uh, these numbers they are not supposed to be headings just text as informative text um, so anyways, each one can decide which is a good structure for your website, but don't make these mistakes of the missing headings or, um, you know, jumping from um, one heading to another one without considering the uh, good structure according to importance. Um, does anyone have any question. I hope you learn something. This, uh, yes, that will be great, House of Cards. Uh, okay, uh, any other comment on the chat or you can activate your mic and comment about it. No? Okay, well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Isaac or John. <laughs> okay, well, um, um, thank you. Um, 
So see you, see you around. <laughs> Okay, so I will leave. Is that okay? Thank you, guys. Hugs from Mexico. Okay, iré a la mesa. Deja, descubro. Let me... Okay, voy a descubrir, descubrir cómo... Voy a la mesa. Mm. Bueno, creo que tengo que salir de aquí. Ok, puede salir. Hmm. Hmm. 